Welcome to the podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Well, what's up, guys? Welcome to the podness. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, and I'm along with... The other third of the partners. It's the Padawan, man. And I'm along with Traumatic Pause. Yo, don't you know no good? It's face, man. <laughs> don't, the place. don't you know? Don't you know, know good. good? All they know is bad. Don't you know no good? But don't you know no fuckery? But don't you oh, know man. no fuckery? Well, guys, um, you don't know. we back for another episode. We done made it another week. So uh, God is still on our side one more week. We here. Oh, oh, everybody, man, if, you man. Got them, light them. if you got them, light them. Well, well, you know, y'all go ahead if you're, the, uh, if you're in the, uh, if you wanted the, the, the facers or the face sets, you know, go ahead and get your, get your light on. Um, but in the meantime, in between times, since we each other since uh, the live and, you know, you just got to always start the show with this oh. now, man. Let's get into our mental health check in, man. How is everyone? How are you, Pat? I'm a lot calmer than I was. Because Sunday I snapped. I snapped mm-hmm. the fuck mm-hmm. off. Not y'all didn't even see it. I snapped the fuck off. A lot was going on apologize. behind the scenes. Son. I'm a, I want to apologize to my mom because she shouldn't hear such language from her son's mouth. But somebody said something about my name, and I was pissed off about it. Um, I am grateful to the family that defended my name, but yeah, I, I'm I'm cool now. I'm good. Not really. Mm, I might. I don't know. See, what people don't understand is I try my hardest to be the the most, you know, just decent human being I can be, period, period. And and through my life, and and, and through my life, I try to keep my little minor traumas, the shit I go through to myself, because I don't want to be a burden to others. Holding that in inside is like a burning ray. And what people don't understand that even though I try to be a decent human being, respectful to everyone, and as nice as I can because I believe in karma and I believe with what you put out there in the universe, you will receive back. But when I get received, when when I receive fuckery out of the blue that has nothing to do with me, y'all understand, I've been waiting to pop off for a good reason all my life. Don't give me a reason. That's all. Don't give me a reason. I've been, I've been waiting. I've just been waiting to just... I'm patiently as, waiting for a track to explode. As, as, um, I'm, I believe Face has said something like this before. As you know, if you, you know, come in... And I'm about to dash a motherfucker! I, I don't know about... Hey, oh. I, I, like, I keep the dashing. He said that before. <laughs> the, the hill. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you, you come at me with ignorance, I'll, I'll bring that back. But the family has calmed me down. And um, um, my boys, my um, my brothers, the, and uh, partners, face and Tiz, they have calmed me down. Um, I wanted to do the live that night, even though it was real, real that day. Um, because if I, I didn't do the told live, I shouldn't do it. I, I said if I didn't do the live, I'd just be in my room thinking about that shit, get mad, and then I might do something stupid. So it was a positive. But I'm better now. Um, just don't fuck with me. And that's it. All right. Hey, Ray. All right. Yep. Now I'm going to go back to looking up flu monkeys for this shirt because we're going to get that puppy. <laughs> Look at his face. It's hilarious. I might not be right for this. I might say some not right stuff this this podcast. I look just like my picture. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, I'm glad you're doing better. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything that you need from us so that we can do to better support you to, through this week? Um, as we go into, you know, the stretch between now. It's one of those things that is, uh, how I say, a self-discovery because I don't know yet what I would need. You know what I'm saying? This is a new thing. But, yeah, y'all always been there for me, so that's good enough for me. <laughs> right on, bro. Well, just keep us posted, man. Um, How are you, Faith? How, how are you doing? How's your mental? Hey, man, mentally. I think I'm in a good place right now, man. I, I really have nothing in my mind but the normal everyday man shit is bills and family. So right now, if I could stay that way, I think I'd be good, man. Like, we all come into bullshit, you feel me? 
but it's the way we process that bullshit that really evaluates our standard as far as where we at mental. And I feel like right now, I can evaluate everything I'm going through and process it very swiftly. It's one of those, it comes to those times where the evaluation process is at a halt that my mentality starts to go aloof and go with all witchy watch it, witchy watch it. But as far as the PTSD shit, I got that on lock because I ain't got no, everybody know my triggers around me, so I ain't got to worry about that. As far as the, oh, the, the anxiety shit, um, that that comes and goes. So I try to stay away from triggers. I try to make sure I'm doing my list and I, I stay smoking. So I'm always a, at a different mindset coming to most shit. So, well, to explain, most anybody who watches y'all always see me smoke. It's not just a habit. I smoke because unbeknownst to everybody else, the calm, collective person face seems like this ain't me all the time. I'm an angry person, but I've been working on my own transition to get through that anger and the angriness side. So mm-hmm. with self-medication and therapy and talking to other people, I've become to be more self-aware of the things that trigger me, both internally and externally. So instead of working on external triggers, because you can't change the external triggers, the ones you can change are the internal ones. So I've been trying to just work on internal stuff this past week, week and a half. As far as internal triggers and the things I know, I do the trigger myself. Like, um, I have a habit of waking up in the morning and it's just, uh, I think it's hereditary because all my kids do the same thing. We're nasty people in the morning. I get up in the morning, I'm fussing at people first thing in the morning where I'm just becoming conscious. So there's no need for me to be fussing, but that's just me. So being, being more self aware that I can do what I need to do to hone that down. Um, just eradicate that because that action it, it, it brings tension in my home early in the morning when everybody try to get their day started. I don't like the kids being upset in the morning. I don't like the wife being upset. Mm-hmm. So I mean, just to try to hone in and make more personal mm-hmm. internal changes to change myself to be a better person, not only physiologically, or excuse me, physiologically, but mentally as well. So that's where I'm at. Just trying to make those slow internal changes to have the best outcome I have. For myself, that's all. I'm not worried about nobody else. Just worry about trying to fix face to face. Well, and uh, how, how about can you? we support this week? Um, how can we be there? Well, my brother, y'all just do what y'all do and be there. But all my subscribers, if y'all can go to artreclothing.com, that made me smile. <laughs> respect, respect. Oh, I I got a, a a Facebook friend hit me up and said they just got their um got their uh our trade clothing. Hey. hey, 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 right, salute. Yeah, hey, man, we got to uh, shout them out, whoever that is, man. Uh, that's our first uh, purchase outside of the family, man. So that's really super so dope. Uh, that's a milestone Ooh. for us, man. So thank you, whoever you are, Pat. Uh, you come bring that name. We can shout them out on the um, live. Uh, um, gotcha. Got some people to model our shit on our Instagram page. So as they buy merchandise. Let them know, send us pictures. We'll post them up on social, social media. So we'll, we'll shout them out with their tag name and we'll throw their picture for them on social media. They be the form. So I know like a, a, dual, a dual promotion because we'll be shouting them out so they may get some links, some clicks on their views or whatever, and they be, they, they, we'll be promoting our shit. So let them know. If they want to try to send their name out there and take a picture of themselves. We'll post it up there for them. All that shit. Yeah. What he said and all that. Hey. Yeah. By Christmas, I want I want us to start like a little, not a competition, but like a little promotion for people who are buying our shit outside of us. Because I'm trying to bring, I'm trying to have somebody on our web page actually modeling our shit right now. We don't have a model on the um, store page, but I'm trying to get one of our actual subscribers who are wearing our stuff to be that. We be need that subscriber model. model. We yeah, need subscriber model. <laughs> Y'all got our information. Y'all can hit me up at rtrayclothing um, at gmail.com or the partners at um, gmail.com, partnerspodcast at gmail.com. Um, let us know. Send those pictures to us so we can get those pictures up. We can get them on our social media for you, get you out there. And also, like I said, we are looking for a model to model some art trade clothing on, on our webpage. Um, I don't, I mean, I could do it myself. We could do it. But I want to have some of the people who actually engage with us do it. I mean, I feel that it mean more to the company and mean more to our people out there. So help us, support us, so we can help support you. Indeed. Our trade clothing. Indeed, man. And yeah, man, um, I am, all right. Um, I feel like I got this false sense of comfort because I'm in my comfortable place. I'm in my home. I like, haven't really went anywhere outside of the rodeo. I went to the rodeo. That was the last place of like anxiety that I was. Um, 
So since then, I've been at the crib. So it's not like there's been anything that can really like trigger you. Oh. Yeah, you know what I mean. That so, so it's like, um, yeah, I, I can get used. Mm. But yeah, cool. so like, I, I just I've switched meds. Um, this is my second day on the new medicine. Um, obviously, it takes a couple of days for this one, not as long as the other one. The other one was gonna take like four weeks. This one right here, I'll probably feel something within the next, you know, day or so. Um, unless what I'm feeling right now is what it's supposed to do, but I feel just kind of like, eh, eh. Feeling real fucking today. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> Whatever. I All too right. said me. Okay. Meh. I'll Meh. Be Meh would be my day. Meh. So um the good thing is if something does happen, uh, if I do uh happen to enter a triggering situation, I do get the uh the on the spot uh medication as well. Right now, meh, which is better than bad. Uh -huh. Um got therapy tomorrow. So we're gonna see what it do with that. Uh, that's always an anxious feel. Anxiety filled time. So we going on there. Yeah, I have more to report on the next mental health check in. That's why the support is uh definitely hold me accountable to two things. Um, I need to make sure that I schedule a pull up with y'all two at some point this week to chill. Mm. And y'all gotta push me to find at least one social activity to do down here before the week is out. <sighs> like like I really gotta push myself to do like more social stuff. Um for one. It pushes me into the anxiety situation to like have to work and get used to them and work my coping strategies that I've been. It also gives me a bigger support base to kind of like not be alone through stuff, which is kind of mm -hmm. like my comfort zone, which is really my a discomfort zone because then I end up miserable. Um, but yeah, so uh, if y'all could just hold me accountable to that and kind of get on me, you can. Yeah, it's all good. So I just need to kick in that this week to make sure I'm on that. So if y'all can hold me accountable to two things, those two things, that would be more than appreciated. And that would be how you could best. Oh, why you why are you acting like you ain't got no teeth? What the fuck wrong with you? It's that, that flu break. monkey. That is that flu monkey. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to move straight <laughs> from the flu monkey into the positive black news. Um, black news. I don't know. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, it's out. the positive black news, man. This is the segment where we talk about the cool shit that Black people are doing, experiencing, creating, getting, receiving, just all of the good things about us this week. Um, so we got a few stories for y'all, man. This first one is coming to us from blacknews.com. Target inks a deal with Black Doll Company, Origin B, founded by a seven-year-old and her mother. The Black Doll Company, founded by a seven-year-old girl and her mother, recently launched their Baby B collection on Target.com. Multicultural toy company Origin Bees announced today that they launched their Baby Bee doll collection on Target Online on October 5th, showcasing not only the variety of beautiful skin tones we have in our black and brown skin, but also the array of curly hair patterns. The company striving to improve racial equity through play was birthed after seven-year-old Essie struggled with her confidence of being the only black girl in her class. This new deal with Target represents a milestone achievement for the brand which continues to grow its toy line to empower girls like Essie to find self-love and pride in their identity by ensuring representation in their toy boxes. So salute to this seven-year-old girl, Essie, and her mother. Um, definitely, you know, Christmas season is coming. Um, Essie and Melissa Origin, if y'all can go ahead, you know, if you're going to get your kids some... Uh, Dolls or something anyway. If you got little girls out there, you can buy them dolls in the way. Go ahead, get them some origin bees. And uh get them something where they can see themselves and what they play with. Get them that's something it, man. They appreciate their skin tone and get used to seeing their toys represent themselves. Get that shit. It's good. I'm that's happy fact. for that. We I need some cute little know, dolls, I man. They pro, really does they promo for that shit. Christmas season coming up, and I'm I'm sick and tired of seeing the same toys, the same dolls every year. These toys, like, like give these kids another selection. Let them know what's something else out there that they can really buy. Uh, Essie, that's her name's Essie. Yeah, big up. I got to show that. Big, do your thing. Do your oh, thing. Oh shoot! So these yeah. the dolls right here, man. That's little Essie right there. But that's the dolls. So you, you know, know if you're gonna get your kid a baby doll instead of a cabbage patch or shit like that, go ahead and get them a a, a baby bee doll from Origin B. You know what I mean? So yeah, there you go. There you go. salute we, to the queens, man. Salute to the queens. Color teams and toys, and not just looking like monsters and shit like that. I'm trying to see the only colors on, on, on toys is gray and blue, and 
and blue, black, and shit like that. Give an array of what we really look like. You feel me? Let, let us be human beings in these toys. You feel me? Like, I fuck with this. Like, I really fuck with it. Now, let's see that somebody else come out with some little toy for boys representing our color as well. But that's a real lack, too. We don't really have no boy toys that represent our color. We got sports toys. But that's only pushing us to, once again, be, be athletes and produce nothing but sweat. Give us something else we can do with <laughs> boys can, can idolize. I'm saying like, the only thing, like, the majority of black things we produce in this country is black and red sweat. Like, produce nothing but sweat. I had... I God had that um, it, that man. one, what had that in one the bishop hell? action figure oh, Lord, you back said, in the day. That was a black character. He, he, but he had big ass guns. So. Sweat, yo. That's all we do. Like, look, look at the majority of black oh, like, the big industries of black people go into that we're no we're known for. Athletes, they produce sweat. You know I mean? Music musicians, you produce sweat. What about the superheroes? We got Falcon. Who? I had the bishop and um, the Black Panther, T'Challa. He did. Well, now, now, back Black in the Panther day. Black Panther not dead. Kill Marga did. Black Panther dead. Chadwick, yes. Once again, you know, the... we produce sweat in America. Let's have oh, some Oh, rest in peace. Let's have something that we can really produce. You feel like, let, let's really make something. Let these kids see it, it's more than just sports talk with these little boys. These little girls, uh, they doing their thing. Now, mm-hmm. let's do the same thing with these little boys. You feel me? Let them know they can be more than just athletes. Give them some toys that actually represent something else other than producing sweat. I'm yeah. tired of buying balls and trucks for my little son. Let him have something else. He can be more than a truck driver or athlete, goddamn shit. And I'm tired of buying I, dinosaurs. I had That's one bishop for another day. One bishop action figure from X Men, but you know he, you know, you know bishop, you know you shoot, you shoot laser rays at him, he can shoot right back with the. Yeah, I had that one, but he had big ass guns, so you know it's just another black dude with guns. And then um, I think I had Storm. I think I did that. But those are like the only two that I can remember that were black and superhero and action figures. You know, G.I. Joe had some. I painted my G.I. Joe's faces with permanent mark. All my G.I. Joe's are black. I need some representation in my toys. Technically, that's black. <laughs> <laughs> there is a joke there, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Technically, it's black face. Shit. Black face by face, shit. Oh man. Um well speaking of creating shit other than sweat, um a black shoe designer reopened the HBCU in Detroit. Um and this comes to us from BNC.tv. Former Nike designer Dr. Dwayne Edwards plans on reopening a historically black college and university in Detroit. Uh Lewis College of Business originally opened in 1928 in Indiana by Violet T. Lewis as a secretary of school for black women. However, the school switched locations to Detroit, Michigan in 1939 and continued operations on the west side of the city for nearly 75 years until it closed. Edward, who helped design the iconic Air Jordans, had a vision for restoring this historic university. He has even secured Target and the Gilbert Family Foundation as investors for the new version of the school. Our goal is to establish the first design-focused HBC, HBCU, Edward said, adding that it will fulfill a need. He said he hoped the school would be embraced by other HBCUs. The school will be renamed to Penn Soul Lewis College of Business and Design when it reopened, named after Edwards Footwear Design Academy based in Portland, Oregon. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Hey, man, they they plan to open in March 2022. Uh Uh Uh-oh, Omar. Huh? Uh Uh-oh, Omar. Omar. Oh man, he got big. Uh-oh, he Uma. got big investors though. He got Target and shit. So, uh oh, Uma. This ain't they, coming they, from they, no Cash App or PayPal. Thing. He ain't asking us for well, shit. It, I just want to donate to do it. I don't want no help from outside sources. I want to do it our own self. He doing himself too. He just doing it a smart way, it's, bro. Is it people a? Um, it, is man, it people design can do school? what they want to do. Yeah, it's a design HBC. I like that. I wish I. I like that. So it's gonna be focused on business and design, uh, which is a it is a need because it's a lot of kids out here that's going into design exactly. fields, whether it be that. graphic design or uh, fashion design or even interior design. I'm seeing kids kind of starting to get into. So there you go. It's a need for it. So producing sure, things other than sweat. There we go. Using yes. that mentality to do other things other than sweat. There we go. Let me keep it going yeah. there, man. Some more shit that ain't sweat. Sprite is uh-huh. spicing up the holidays in collaboration with a Black-owned brand called Unwrap. Sprite is returning with a popular seasonal flavor and working with Black-owned brand Unwrap to promote Black joy this holiday season. 
They're adding a touch of spice to the holidays, and the brand is teaming up with the Black-owned gift wrap <sighs> company for its campaign. With their popular seasonal flavors, Sprite Winter Spice Cranberry and Sprite Winter Spice Cranberry Zero Sugar. <laughs> Niggas don't like no zero sugar. What? I was just thinking that shit sound sound bland as hell. But um, it's coming back. They're looking out for, they're huh? looking out for uh, people with high blood pressure. How did Sprite become the black people soda? The fuck? Well, they're not the All black people Voltron soda, but a black company... The unwrap company is teaming with them for their ad campaign, basically. So um, they're gonna be releasing a new holiday campaign that's gonna run on all of their social media, digital, and all of their retail channels. And it's gonna be the first new campaign in five years. The campaign is gonna focus on celebrating the season with loved loved ones in person after more than a year of battling the COVID pandemic. It's called a Sprite Holiday Special Commercial, and it's gonna represent Black joy infused with modern culture. Who are they gonna have it offset? Some black joy. No, it's gonna be like uh I guess they're gonna have like stuff going on, but basically the company that's gonna be supplying all of the gifts and the wrapping and the, the aesthetic unwrap. footer thing is gonna be this company unwrapped. So that's, that's yeah. really what I'm celebrating is the fact that they're getting this big thing, which is gonna now take them to even a higher plateau because you get a plug with this big company and kill it. Sky's uh-huh. the limit. <laughs> Sky's the limit and you know so shout out to Unwrap. Um, if you want to find out more information about Unwrap, go to unwrp.com. Unwrp.com. So um, check them out. And um, yeah. And that that last story came to us from bnc.tv. And our last story is coming to us from goodblacknews.org. I like that. Good black. Yes. Um, Finally. Queen Mother, Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou. Someone tells you who they are. Believe them. She is about to be on the U.S. quarter as a part of the 2022 American Women Series. She's going to be on the first coin it to be issued from the American Women Quarters program in 20. 20- other women are going to be Wilma Mankiller, the first female principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, Nina Otero Warren, a leader in New Mexico's suffrage movement, and the first female superintendent of Santa Fe Public Schools, Anna Mae Wong, the first Chinese-American film star in Hollywood, and Dr. Sally Ride, a physicist, astronaut, educator, and the first American woman in space. So you got a lot of women that are like coming from different minority groups and different uh, backgrounds. I love that. And uh, shout out to, uh, first of all, shout out to the Queen Mother Maya Angelou who was celebrating in the story. But shout out oh, to yes. Wilma Mankiller from the Cherokee Nation for having such a badass name. Wilma Mankiller? I was about to say, yo. Like, God damn. Yo. You know, on comic book. <laughs> I don't know what she does as the chief, but I'm scared. If, 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 if we got to go to war, I'm calling Wilma because that's some thug ass name there. Mankiller. That's- that just that's, sound that's, like she gonna put a damn something in the middle of your fucking forehead. That's that's uh that's how she got so far. They were afraid of that name. How she spell that shit, bro? How she spell that shit? Like W I L M A and then M A N M A N K I L L E R Man Killer. Exactly like I'm saying it. I ain't embellishing it. Like that's her name. Her name is her name. Wilma Man Killer. Y'all gotta do better. The too. hardest gotta, name in America. God gotta, dang. Shout out to these, these queens better. here, man. Y'all gotta treat these women better. They they changing. Real they got their whole name as what they're gonna do. Bro, it's getting <laughs> Y'all real. Treat man. these women better. It is getting shut real, up. bro. And something <laughs> else that is getting real. It's been a long road for us to get here. It's been a long road. Long for us to get here, and it's time, time for us to figure this shit out. Figure this shit out as we go into the top MC of the 2000s. Dum dum dum. Um. So yeah, guys, it's time. We have done the final four. We have made it to the final four, I should say. Um. And now that we are here, it's time to narrow it down to our finalists. Remember, up until now. We are going to be voting as well as the pod squad. But this next week, guys, pod squad, we're going to need you more than ever because it is you who will vote our top MC of the 2000s. So, fellas, without further ado, I ain't going to waste your time. I ain't going to waste the pod squad time. Let's get into this. Can y'all see the brackets? Oh, yes. Yeah. I got the pod squad's picks. 
from this last week. So I got their voice being heard. And let's go. Y'all want to start in the top bracket or the bottom bracket? The one seed or the two seed? I'm going to go ahead and start with the Kendrick and Pusha T. Um, lyrics, let's just get that out there first. Kendrick. Ooh, okay. Kendrick with the lyrics. Um, marketability. I'm Man, I'm going to just make this short. Kendrick, 30, man. 3-0, Kendrick. I ain't going to count the explain there. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. Face has spoken. Face has fucking spoken. Um, Pat? Uh, I kind of feel the kind of uh, the, the, the same way. Um, y'all already do what I was gonna pick before I even got it. Just off of the previous previous times we talked about it. The way I've talked about Kendrick, then the way to talk about Pusha T. So we we're just gonna say Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Okay. Yeah. We all know the prize fight we really want to. <laughs> Let's make it. Well, the pod squad <laughs> had picked the underdog, and the pod squad had pushed it. Oh, wow. That is surprising. Yes. So, to break the tie, I guess it is falls on uh, your boy. Uh-oh. Um, this is where it gets. Lyric. No. I'm going to go to that last. Marketability. I actually think this one. I'm going to say Kendrick Lamar just because I feel like worldwide it's there, but I honestly don't know just because of Pusha T's longevity. He has songs that have kind of transcended his Bathe and Apes um, campaign with Really Big in Asia and the fact that he rolled with Kanye. But I'm going to get it to Kendrick. So that's market marketability. Um, stage oh. presence, I'll give it to Kendrick. Um, I feel like he has more to give. Um, he has a bigger stage show. Um, Pusha T is more like straight on the bars, kind of giving it to you in that vibe, but Kendrick giving it to you that. But he also has like production value with his stuff. He can actually captivate any type of crowd. Um, so I'm gonna give it to Kendrick. And then lyricism, I don't, the only thing that makes Kendrick win that is his versatility. But like bar for bar, they're close. Yeah. It's just Pusha can't rap about the same things that Kendrick can and it sound the same. So I gave it to Kendrick. And for the oh. first time in this entire thing, the pod squad has been outvoted by the pod. So Kendrick. Don't be mad at me. Be don't be mad at me. Yeah, don't be mad at me. Right. The next and the last bracket before we pick up <clears throat> J. Cole versus Two Chain Fight. <clears throat> um, Pat, you want to kick this one off? Or I'm gonna be real simple with mine, man. Uh, no matter of fact, I'm gonna give Two Chains. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be deliberate. I'm gonna give Two Chain the actual um rundown because. Yeah, all right, let's go with let's go with stage present. Let us. I kind of feel I feel like I, that goes to change with stage present. Two chains. Uh, just all of his music alone, you can always get that energy from him. So with Cole's energy, it's like only certain songs is going to have that hype, you know, to it or whatever. Um, let's go to marketability. That is a close fight. That is a real close fight because chains. Chains has a strong following. He has a strong following for a good long time. Whatever. His following has made him actually be able to rebrand from something non-marketable like Titty Boy to, to <laughs> 2 Chain. Right now, Titty Boy will be popping. That name will be jumping right now. The right now, yeah. But back then, <laughs> they, they, wasn't, they, they, could not, they wouldn't be able to figure that out right then and there. Right now. Yeah. It's oh like boy. the work that he has done with two chains is or, or whatever, and the way the world has progressed early on um, is probably the reason why he could probably get away with Titty Boy right now. But Cole, man, I don't know what it is, man. Cole is able to pull magic out of nowhere. Like I can he's do able magic. to doubt. He's uh, able to like basically shut his doubters up with a lot of with a with a lot of moves that he do. I just feel like he. You know what I'm saying? Like he could just do anything at this point in his career and it will work. You know what I'm saying? Like just just think about it. Like a rapper, remember um Master P, he was in the league at one time. We didn't know nothing about that until he wasn't in the league no more. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like it became a novelty, pretty much. But Cole, he can go run with a random league. And it only boosts it, boosts him up. And then he just got the Rock Nation foundation behind. Him. Man, it's tough. Right. Lyricism, 
I'm going to give it a cold. I'm going to give it a cold, man. I'm going to just give it a cold. <laughs> I know what I want to say. Okay. <laughs> uh, for me, man, uh, marketability, I gave it to 2 chains. Um, I think he has a broader exposure, and I honestly think on a global level, he's actually um, more known than J. Cole, especially by face card. Oh. So I would give oh. it to him. Um, I feel like as far as earning potential, they're pretty close. Um, yeah. But uh, overall, marketing, um, lyricism, J. Cole can do what 2 Chains can do. 2 Chains, he has more pockets. He can jump into versatility. He can punch with the best of them, but he can also give you a uh, talk to you flow where he's straight, just barring and giving you real life um, wittiness. So I, I just think J. Cole wins lyricism and then stage show. Um, it's close, man. It's close. It's real close because 2 Chains can dance. He'll get a band dance on. Um, dance make him dance. But I remember when we talked about MC and it was the stage show. It was how you deliver bars everywhere. And if you're giving me the all around packet from Funk Flex, from, from hmm, shit, from Funk Flex <laughs> freestyles to him being in the booth on a track to him performing on stage, I feel like J. Cole gives a little bit more. So I get. Okay, now let's get two chains. Uh, marketability, I'm going to give it a hand down to the global figure. Um, if we're going to uh, put these two people in China and the square and see who is recognized more, I'm going to say two chains recognized more. And you say pick the same two up and you throw them to Africa and put them in Johannesburg, busy ass time of the day. I'm going to say people will notice two chains before they notice J. Cole. Um, they take the same two, take them to Europe, same thing. I think two chains, once again, will be known as one of J. Cole. So marketability, um, notoriety, and noticeability, I'm going to give it to two chains. The potential, though, J. Cole still has a lot of potential to grow. So his potential for marketability is still astronomical. Um, he just don't put his, I don't, I don't see him as putting himself in the position to have certain opportunities to be marketable because of the the image he displays he puts out that 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 more grounded image that more um conscious image i'm, I'm still popular and i'm still mainstream but I, I still got a conscious flow to what i'm doing so i don't see him putting himself in certain realms that two chain would as far as being marked um stage presence and the command of the crowd um now both of them have they give different how can i say they give the fans something different on each one of their shows. Um, as far as each person, um, two chains you gonna get a lot, of, a lot of high energy from them. You get your dance, and you gonna get your 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 normal down south shit. But with J Cole, you go there, you get a little bit of that, but you get more of that soul searching, it's more of that I can understand, it's more of, yeah I've been there, it's more of that this is gonna help me get through this situation type shit. It's more mental type shit. Um, uh, but you still get the same same type. So on the actual MC in this kind of type for me to judge, but I'm going to give that one to J. Cole. Um, lyrics, now, most people will say this would be an easy one, but it's not because 2 Chain does have the lyrical ability to do just as much as J. Cole does. Um, I'm not going to say 2 Chains can't go where J. Cole can go because just on the conversations he has in his interviews with not just on the rap interviews, but he's invited to TV panels on on news broadcasts. He can take it there and show his his the depth of his vocabulary just on there. So just imagine if he took the his interview prowess and what he does verbally there and implicate that into his music. That'd be a different level. But being he does not, that would give J. Cole that edge. Because even though he has the ability to do it and the potential to he doesn't put himself and his music in the realm to do it. His music stays more on uh, another another phase. So he draws a different type of consumer in, um, where J. Cole can draw that more wide base. Uh, I'm in my mental. So everybody can be in a mental at some point in time. So everybody at some point in time may want to listen to a J. Cole. But not everybody may be a hype type person. Everybody may not be a it's my birthday type person. You feel me? But there's a lot of middle kids, middle child, middle children out there. They want to hit it. They might want to vibe with that middle child. They vibe some that middle child. You feel me? Um, so I'm going I'm J. Cole. Um, it was it, it was hard. It was I think the hardest one. Excuse me. Pause. Out of all the competition. Thank you, Park. Yeah. Uh, 
J. Cole for his two chains, it wasn't just as easy as everybody thought it would be just go hands down because to me, I wanted to say tie and just take my vote out of it. But I ain't want to do that to the fans. I ain't want to do that to the bracket. So I'm going to say J. Cole 2-1. Um, I already wanted to say 2-2, two, two, three, uh, three, 3 all around. Both of them got it the same amount, but I get J. Cole. Well, it's a five vote for J. Cole there, guys. Kendrick versus J. Cole. I honestly wasn't sure that we were going to get this. This is what we wanted. I didn't think we were going to get this. This, I was pushing for Pusha T for for real hard, but when he ended up against Kendrick. This was destined in the storm. Him against J. Cole, I could have pulled it off a little easier. I was going for Uh, fucking Childish Gambino. Well, guys, Pod Squad, it's completely up to you. Whatever you decide is what we will go with. It's up to you. Vote, 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 vote. This video is coming out the same day the podcast drop. Please go vote. Please go vote. Link will be in the description of this video and on Twitter. In the description of this video and on Twitter. Please vote. My people, vote. Go, 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 vote. Go, 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 vote. Go, vote, go, vote, go, vote, go. So, the greatest uh, rapper ever. Tell us who we're going to have, man. Who's going to be the top MC of the 2000s? Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole? Or oh, Padawan. What? And, man, and that is this week's segment of the top MCs of 2000s. Please vote, guys. Uh, we need your voice to be heard. We need to know who you want to see as our number one MC. So, please, get out there. Get on the link. Hit that shit. Vote that shit. Hit that shit. You feel it? Hit that shit. Hey. Hit that shit. What? Hit that shit. Hey. Hey. I told y'all the Padawan is the greatest rapper in the world. Hey. 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 Wow. Hey. 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 All right. Um, we're gonna go. Uh, go ahead. Kick it on off, man. And speaking of hitting that shit. And creepy mm. smiles, weirdly enough. We hinted on it last week, man. Everybody done seen it by now, man. Ain't no more spoilers. You done seen it. You know what done oh, happened. We know what's going down. It's time to talk Squid Games. Full Ooh. season recap, review, overall thoughts, episode yeah, highlights, theories yeah, for next season. Um how it to set it off for other Asian shows to be now hits. Uh, just all things Squid Games. Let's get into it. Let's I'm get start into it. it. I'm gonna Face it brought it to us, so I definitely should get the floor first. He I'm definitely was the one that brought I'm it to us. I'm going to double down on my Sang Woo comment from last week. Sang Woo, man. Sang Woo. At the end, Sang Woo come through. Sang Woo came through at the end. He was an asshole, but he was a realist, mm-hmm. man. Once he got in this shit and shit stopped popping up, he knew at the end of the day, I ain't gonna fucking die. I'm gonna do whatever it takes for me to win this game. The original premise to kill himself. Day, he knew. Get the fuck won. out of here. He to he kill knew. himself. He did Why all he that himself? fuckery and that bullshit Why did he kill himself? to end up killing his damn kill self. Fuck out of here. Why did he kill himself? He was an ass. Why did he kill himself? He was a fucking dick. He why was a dick and an ass, and an ass and a you dick, and that's himself? why he died. You know, I'm glad it's because karma put his hand right to you that knife and said, himself. "You deserve to die. Stab nope. yourself." No, nope. shouldn't have poked that girl. Nope. Should have gave her a fight. Should have gave her a fight chance and let her have a chance to fight for her shit, which was the damn game. Not be a bitch and go stab that girl like that. She could have lived. She, she could have lived. Live. You give her that chance. You don't take that chance live? in your hand. You ain't How God. Live, bro? How she gonna live with that blow? With Man. that blow to her abdomen, she lost that much blood. What was his name? Yo, Ginha. Ginha. Look, look, look. Ginha. Ginha was the name. Listen, yeah, I get listen. All right, no, matter of fact, the you go shit. ahead. I'm gonna tell you exactly how though that could have been averted and how she feels. He died because Saint- Ginha won't go kill him. He knew Ginha won't go kill him. They got all the way to the end after all them sacrifices, all them people died. We killed all these people. Jihan willing to go back home broke and just, I'm, I'm going to be broke and fuck all this. Sang was like, man, neither one of us leave here. We, we did all this shit. I ain't even able to shut my conscience. I'd rather sacrifice myself and let my boy go ahead home with this bullshit, with, with this money, and my boy be better off. 
instead of me getting up and killing him and still know I killed my best friend and I got the money. Fuck it, I'm gonna take myself out and take my guilt with me. Whatever I did here, I did it here just for here. I'm good, my boy. I know you're gonna give it up, but I know you won't go kill me. I know you can't kill me because you could have killed me. You could have been killed. Because like you, you just told me, me. The only stuff that lie, cause old girl saved me. You just told me, old girl saved my life because you was gonna kill me with this knife. We in here, you done beat my ass. You got an opportunity to kill me. You done left your knife beside my head. Fuck this. Let me take myself out because I'm not gonna quit this game with you, bro. I'm not gonna quit with you. We done did all this shit. I just killed Ali. Fuck this. I'm a, I'm gone. Take the money. Rest in peace, Ali. And because Jihan realized that sacrifice, that's why Jihan left his mama some money and took that boy to him because now you got a new son to raise the right way. You maybe you can raise your son. You feel me? That's why he gave a boy to him and that money. He ain't owe Jihan no money. He ain't owe the same with no money. He like just this the money I owe saying he owe him shit. He had to give him that money, but he realized that sacrifice. He realized why he killed himself. Now I agree with most people. Yeah. Jihan was an asshole. Not Jihan, excuse me. Sang Wu was an asshole most of the fucking movie. He ain't had to kill Ali. He ain't had to trick that man like that. That was some fuck shit. He tricked him like that. You feel me? But at the end yeah. of the day, it's some preservation. One on one. Because at the end of the day, in that same game, you can look at Jihan and say, Jihan was an asshole tricking my man with dimension when he really ain't had dimension. You feel me? And still his mom. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody was an asshole. And everybody was no. At some point, at some point for self preservation, for you to make it through this next game, you had to end up knowing either I'm going to die or this next motherfucker there. Ain't nobody make us come here. We all volunteered to come in this motherfucker. So after that first game, when you saw what was up, when you came back, you knew that you had the power to either take somebody's life or give your life from, from the second game on. So everybody had the same choice to make. Some people just willing to make their choice even back, even quicker because they realized hey, ain't no getting out of this fucking game. Why we all, majority of people ain't going to opt out and just like, okay, we're going to leave again. No, because this time they killed the people the first time. We killed them everybody else second time. We go, we all in these motherfuckers. I hear everything you said, and I must first say this. This is art, so it's up to invitation. Respect your perspective. But Sang Woo's a bitch-ass nigga. <laughs> Sang Woo, he's a fuck boy. There's a difference in everything. Even in survivalist situations, there is a difference in intent of the heart. That matters. That matters. Sang Woo was no better than that old butt face nigga that got slammed by the lady when, when they went back flopping into the glass. He's no better than that. Let me go. Let me the go. only difference is he made it further. This is what this is really what happened in that end in that end scene. Sang Woo killed that girl because he was a cold-blooded motherfucker the whole damn time. At the end. When Jihan real when Jihan could have killed that nigga, and he realized Jihan had his life in his hands and did not kill him because Jihan actually wanted to do things, and he realized the get being right was bigger than the game. Sing Wu realized, oh shit, I'm fucked up. He felt guilty as fuck, and he realized if I get out of this game, I gotta go back to life and deal with this shit. I can't be a, I'm a bitch ass nigga. I can't deal with being guilty. So let me just get this shit over with and take the easy way out. <laughs> That's why he said sorry, because he knew he was going to leave Jihan to carry all that guilt by himself. He won't go carry nothing. That's what the fuck with that shit was all about. That nigga was a fuck boy saying uh, Jihan gave that, that lady the money just because he was a good nigga. And he knew that shit was the right thing to do. No one. Well, Sang Woo was a bitch ass nigga. If you don't like Joe Budden, then Sang Woo get deserve whatever you think Joe Budden should get. Fuck no more. No Sang Woo gets a, whatever you think Joe Budden should. Get. No one's a bigger bitch ass nigga than that guy that uh sacrificed his wife. And I ain't forgot. Fuck you too, Putin. But go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, no, no one's a bigger bitch ass nigga than the guy that sacrificed his wife in that game or whatever. Because then after that, he was like, I don't, I don't want to play the game no more. And blah 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 blah. No, it's they too go, late. Fuck you. Yeah, it's too late. Anybody want to play the game no more? I, I was like, well, if you go, you go. But that the way that boy did that damn Indian man, that was fucked. That was fucked up. Put them rocks in that shit. Like oh, nigga, man. just beat the nigga at the game, or just scam him and tell him you did it because he can't do nothing valid to you. But don't don't take the main rod. Right. Don't don't just had a man really yeah. feel like okay, I done gave this man my trust. I, I that's fuck. The play. I mean, that was the game. I call me what you that want, man. Game. I'm a ruthless motherfucker cerebral. when it call for it, but I ain't ruthless to the point where I'm gonna do somebody dirty just like on some on some like 
no, yo. If it's like fair play, like, all right. Like, even if we fight to the death, like, if I got a gun, I ain't gonna just, if I already got you down, I ain't gonna just kill you. I might just shoot you in the legs and the arms, you know, just so you can't do nothing else for the day. But I ain't got to take your life. Like, I don't know, man. I, I kill a nigga, but damn, man, I ain't got it in me no more. That nigga just gave that nigga a sack of rocks. Look, I ain't down today. Here you go. Oh, Take Ali was rocks. just walking like. He was walking around. I'm like, oh, shit. This nigga gave that me shit. rocks. Um, so my theory was wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that's his dad. Nope. But I do think that it reminds him of his son. There was a lot of similarities between his son and Jihan. From the birthday being really close to the games that the Jihan played as a child to even the um, Jihan having a lot of habits of the old man. Like, um, what was his name? Ilnam? Ilnam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ilnam, like, compulsive gambler. Um, focused more on gambling than his family. Left his family to go do games. Just happened to get rich at it, but... You feel me? Like, it's the same mm-hmm. real, it's the same basic pattern. Like, they had a lot of the same idiosyncrasies as far as, like, they were willing to do maybe not great shit, but they also still had a strong moral code that kind of prevented them from going overboard. Like, they weren't willing to do just anything. They still had some type of a code in the middle of a, basically, a dastardly world that they both lived in, whether it be the horse racing and gambling world or, you know, the VIP gambling on real people world. Um, mm-hmm. but um, so my theory was wrong though, so I can kick that. Who um, was the cold motherfucker the whole thing? Coldest motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Technically, yeah. If he ran and he hosted the whole shit on the low. Mm-hmm. That last scene. Coldest motherfucker was uh the the front man to me. The way mm-hmm. he did it, the way he was willing to do his brother. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's was, one thing when cold. you're doing this behind the mask, non-personal type shit. But when you know who, who who it is that you're fucking over and you know what you're about to do to him, like, damn, he was willing to try to kill your brother. Shut that nigga. Bah! Like, that, that's some cold shit. Like, nobody yeah, else in the story, like, really killed, like, outside of the dude that fucked over his wife. Nobody else did anything as cold as that. Now, but the front man had a higher body count plus that. He uh-huh. shot him in the chest. He shot him in the shoulder. Do you think he lived after that fall into the water? Or do you think he probably shot him in the second season? You feel me? Do I you definitely think he, think he lived. Like that? He probably, do you think him shooting his <laughs> brother saved his brother's life? Now, here's where my theory come in. You know, I always got a crackpot theory on something. This is my theory for the show. Um... Jihan is going to end up becoming the proprietor of the game at some point next season where he takes over the game and he becomes a new Ilna. Um, The front man, I believe he has plot, some type of plot with his brother where they're doing a whole lot of shit, the posture for the cameras and, the, you know, but they, they got something going on. And I believe that shot to the shoulder was like so that the brother could survive and they can make it look believable. But you know, still get away with that. Now, see me, I think Jihan gonna go take his ass back and he'll be the first one that's forcefully put in the game because the phone conversation told him, look, man, get on the plane, enjoy your life. Don't get involved with this no more. <laughs> he handled their phone and got back, headed back the other way. So I think he gonna, he know where the shit is. I don't know if he know exactly where that, but he know how to get into the game. So I think he gonna figure a way to get into the game, get kept in the fucking game. And then I think he going to die. I think the front man going to take over. You feel me? But okay. I think he's got a soft spot because that was his little brother. He ain't want to off his little brother. But he knew if he took him back, he was going to have to either put him in the game. But he wants to see his brother in the game. So I figured he shot him in the shoulder. Fell off. The, he fell off the little cliff right there. He already knew the Coast Guard would be there momentarily. So if you're in the water, they going to get you. You feel me? They right. going to save you right there. So hopefully you can survive. As far as G Hunt, like I said, I think he gonna I think he gonna end up in the game and he gonna die. Um coldest motherfucker in the game. Um hard to say, really hard to say. But I'm gonna go with old girl. Not the old not old girl that made it all the way to the end, but the other one who was extra quiet, who sacrificed yeah. her for old girl to make it to the next to make it that far to the end. Oh. You feel me? I'm gonna say she's the, the little young one. 
Yeah, because she the code. She like, I ain't got no ride. She already knew what time it was. If I get out of this bitch, like, what am I doing? I ain't got no family. <laughs> I'm in this motherfucker just to be in it for real. <laughs> it made it all that far just to give, just to sacrifice herself. She could have won the game. Matter of fact, I thought she, I think she did win the game, or she ain't even tried to win the fucking game. But yeah, she just she dropped gave herself up. She gave herself up. Cold as motherfucking the whole shit. You feel me? Like cold as motherfucker. She got the nut. Thank you for getting to know me. Let me thank you for sharing your story with me. But well, peace out. Oh. You, 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 you got this. Go ahead. Now, is that I the coldest me. motherfucker or the dumbest motherfucker? I feel that's the coldest motherfucker. I feel the dumbest motherfucker was the doctor. I feel he was the dumbest motherfucker to spaz out like that. When you know, like, all you guys are fucking scalpel. It's these three motherfuckers in here. What you really going to do with this scalpel? They really have guns, nigga. Like, you got one. Cool. But you got one. Now, give me straight on something like, real really, quick. Because I want to agree with you. you. Did the front man know that the doctor was in on shit? No. No, he had not killed. He killed him. He had him so, killed. Because he wanted the theme of the game is so everybody had the same opportunity in the game. The so that's my the thing. Other, the doctor is the doctor. Because yeah. he should have rolled that shit out. I would have wrote mm -hmm. it out, or if he was smart, he would have, after he killed the first couple in that room, he would have strategically, like, went about, like, doing whatever he had to do to get back to that main room, and then he would have played it cool. He's the dumbest motherfucker. Because if, if they ran in and tried to do something to him, they would have had to prove all of that shit, and they would have had to eventually give up themselves. So then the front man might have had to deal with them dudes, and since the players are more valuable than the guards, mm -hmm. he might have had a chance. To, to do something or at least play it off long enough to get away. But yeah, you're right. He was dumb as hell. Doctor, the dumbest nigga. Smoothest move. Well, I'm gonna say best revenge move was old girl that fucked the fucked the, um the gangster in the bathroom because she told his oh, yeah. thing, you fuck me over, I am gonna kill you. <laughs> She's also <laughs> the most annoying, <laughs> the most annoying character. Up there she was. God damn, yo. I I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I, I was kind of glad when she did the bear hug of death. I was glad yeah. just so I ain't had to hear her for another episode. She's like a Korean Karen. Mm -hmm. Yo, the, the new Korean. KK. 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 Mm -hmm. um, Shut your ass up, KK. First of all, you see, oh, go ahead. Four, it was 456, play, 456 players in the 456 player one. I think it was set up for that. I really think Ilna had like something to do with some of that. Like, I feel like he kind of had, like, strategically placed certain players in positions based off of, like, certain profiles because he was looking for somebody to be his successor since he knew he couldn't run the game no more. But he knew he needed somebody that kind of fit his similar profile. I don't think so. 456 almost died a couple damn times. He almost died red light, green light. Same one telling this nigga hide behind somebody. You feel me? You know, when old boy knocked him down, he won't go get up. The same move, like, man, you better you get your ass up. You're going to die. Yeah, I don't, I feel like 456 was lucky, he, and it he, feels he, like he, it was, like, he, part of the symbolism, but what I'm saying is, like, I feel like it was maybe, like, 10 or 15 of them dudes in there that had, like, a similar profile to Jihan that was, like, close to the way the old man thought and moved about life that he felt, like, would be good people to take over the game, so he kind of rigged it, so, like, one of them would have a higher chance to win than the other 441. Because it was like, it was weird the way he kept connecting with Jihan the further shit go. And like, he could have like still fucked Jihan over at the end, but he was like, nah, you good, go ahead. Like, he oh, really could have did him dirty, but he was like, nah, I want you to go. Gumba. Gumba. And he could have done it. Because he could have killed Jihan off and then went on to the next round and found somebody else to sack up to like be the person that he rolled with. But I think it was some in Jihan that was like, Okay, yeah, you one of them 15. You you close enough to me. I, I see it. All right. Um, speaking of which, what's y'all theories for next season? Like, where do y'all think they they go with season two? Because it's I'm gonna go back. I yeah. think they're gonna go back into the game and have some different childhood games. I mean, like, I don't know the childhood games you they play in Korea. So there may be a whole variety of different games we haven't seen yet. They can go into um of course they're gonna go into the more character development and it's gonna be different Maybe. people in the game. Um I think we've probably already seen some of the people in season one that's gonna be in season two as far as the game. Um but we just don't know. They probably pass their buys and shit and we don't know. But we're gonna have some connection because as I rewatched some of the episodes, some of the people that I was seeing were in the game. Like do you remember to the um beginning, I think it's episode one or two when Jihan's at the ATM and he's trying to get the money. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
the dude is right behind him. Now, if you remember later on when they were about to do the glass bridge, the dude that he would talk to, they was talking about, let me be, let me do, take number one because I yeah. never had a chance to pick number one. Myself. That's the same dude that was in the ATM room. Oh, see, it's only because I watched the whole thing and went back and watched it, and I'm like, oh, I know where oh. your ass is at. I'm thinking the same thing might happen in season two with some other, just some off wall characters. May we may have thought that were just passerbys or may have thought were extras. But actually have something to do with the series because as I watch the series, like I say again, I'm seeing other characters pop up in the game that I didn't know were actually seen before because I was so focused on the main people. So mm. I think it'll be more character development. They'll go further, probably in the history of the game since the game's been going on since the 80s. So I think they may may go further into the history of the game and who the VIPs are because. Even though the fat guy got knocked out, he's still living. So they may go into the VIP stories, how they were chosen or whatever like that. But the it's endless possibilities. But I'm glad they came out with it. I hope they keep running with it, get a more small series, small season. Yeah, um, I definitely want to see where they go with it. But I, I'm not really sure how far Gihan Gihan makes it next season. Um, I want to see him become the the game master and see what they can kind of do with that. Um. I definitely I don't think, think he will become it. Say that one more time. I don't think he will become the game master. I don't think because I don't think because the, I mean, the game master got to have like that cold blood streaking. And I, I think he's too good hearted to to want to run the games. If he, if he, I see him if he take over, he might just shut this shit down. That's possible. I ain't arguing with you on the possibility of that. But I really hope shut down that bright ass red hair he had. At the I really hope he becomes the game master, and I want to see him kind of have like a cat and mouse type thing with the. The police, like I feel like there's going to be some type of a police or federal agent element to the next season where they're infiltrating the game and going off the evidence that the brother had somehow. And they're like now trying to shut the game down. But you got the VIPs kind of covertly operating against that. Like, I feel like that's going to become an element of um I definitely think they're going to come more, become more creative with the games because I would hate to see them do the exact same games. Like, now you know how they work. So it's like, so? Yeah. Like, part of the, the first season was the shock factor of some of the games. Like, oh, it's like, it's oh shit. Like green light? Right. Like, that that shock value, like, you need something else that goes in that round because that's what, set the, that's what set the season off. That, that what? This is the first episode in these this is what's happening? <laughs> like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? So um, I definitely think that's, yeah, they got to change up the games. But I definitely think it's going to be more of a cat and mouse between the VIPs and the people who run the game, the people who are trying to get the game shut down, the police and the fellow rally. Um, Pat? I watched this like it was an anime because it definitely gave me all the vibes of an anime. Especially at the end when he changed his hair to red. Still <laughs> can't understand why he got that bright ass. Oh man, I'm I'm a Karen, but I date black guys on the weekend. <laughs> Bob going on like the red hair. Oh no. But um thoroughly entertained. I do feel like we still might find out that old dude was Gihan's father because he they just I feel like they might have threw that in there just to see if people will go with it. And then they're going to, if people do go with it or whatever, they might write it in the second season or something like that. And um, I don't know, man. I just don't know what to expect because I never knew what to expect in each episode. So I, I don't even want to guess, like, I can figure this out or whatever. This this was the most random shit I've watched. <laughs> it was definitely the most random shit. Well, that's the most random. I know y'all really have not watch no more episodes of Alice in Borderland. Yeah. Uh, I've, 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 I've actually to made it to, into it. I'm halfway it. through the third episode. Um, okay. I okay. also watched a show, a movie called Train to Busan. Uh, yes. I've heard of that. Yeah, I feel nice. like this is like a new Asian thing, new Asian wave Train that's Busan, coming over right? because these movies and shows are fucking crazy. Train to Busan is my shit. Yo, if you Train like zombie Busan movies, my shit. Very interesting take on it um, by the Korean. Uh, I think, yeah. Start but it's, to finish. It's. Did you I, see why? We might have to do a review on that it movie. It, it's you see why it started, nigga. Train the boost gun. All comes a fucking. Pat, movie. have you seen this yet? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't had a okay. chance to. I just, I'm not going to ruin it for you. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but watch that this week. Alice in Borderland. 
the game had I don't remember what the episode was like that or which one of each game was. Have you seen it when they played tag yet in the hotel? In the hotel yes, home? Joe. Oh. <laughs> well, when you find out game. who was it, like oh yes, <laughs> this game is sick. Yes, <laughs> what? Where the hell are they? What is this borderland? You get to the last episode. That's a video game. And you still don't fall. I still oh, don't fall. Man. You find out another clue. <laughs> All right. So we're going to definitely do an Allison Boy review next week. Um, and uh, Train to Busan review. Pat, go watch Train to Busan and Alice in Borderland this week. And we're going to review it. Um, yes. Because uh, this yeah. Asian invasion is kicking ass right now, man. I'm loving it. They they are coming with the hits, man. Man, Asian's been having great cinema and for the longest time i'm still i honestly was never that anime. big of a fan like that like i like certain uh kung fu flicks back in the day but it wasn't like a big thing for me per se but these oh. movies now like as far as like their dramas and their horror like i wasn't big into those movies but they Woo! wait till y'all wait till y'all see cowboy bebop when that live action show come out because it's looking great well we're gonna have to train the boost gun and i tell you what man this week has been full of some yeah. fuckery, but guess what, man? That's definitely with some good right there. Yeah. And uh, if you I don't want to, if you don't want to get catch, become a zombie, then I think y'all need to realize it's time. <laughs> it's time. Yeah. And it ain't time, time to catch that train to Busan. What time, what time is it? What time is it? Wait, let me check. What time is it? What time is it? Fuckery what time. Good. Fuckery. Episode 47, good and fuckery. <laughs> oh, man. Look, I'm going to be honest with y'all, man. There, it's been a slow news week, man. It hasn't slow been news. that much fuckery. That's good, right? No. I don't know. It seemed like all the fuckery came in into my personal life and, and not into the media one. So, I understand. But let's get into the fuckery I did find. <laughs> Well, you, you, you know what? I want to bring this up because this is an old story, but I just thought this was funny. But a drunken man who had been reported missing spent hours with the search party looking for himself reports. I saw this shit. Yeah. Nigga Turkish man was reported. <laughs> walked around for hours with home. these niggas looking for himself. <laughs> as they called his name for hours. He's and calling his, his own damn name for hours <laughs> before he realized. Yeah. What is we calling? I don't know. I don't know what's name? a common name in Turkey. Hey, y'all, that me. My bad, but, that um, me. The dude name. I don't wonder why is, we won't find it, dude. Yeah, that me. That me. I'm right here. His name is damn. Behan Mutlu. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but his name is Behan Mutlu. I'm pretty sure. Boy. <laughs> He's 50, 50 years old, you drunken construction worker who had been dumb reported man. missing, spent hey, hours yo. with a search party looking for himself. Dumb as um, hell. Uh, he said he um, reportedly dumb became, as hell. relatives became concerned when he didn't return home after a night drinking with his friends. Because he dumb as Inigal hell. And Turkey's Bursaw province. I'm probably saying that name wrong, but whatever. It's okay because he's dumb as hell. I was talking about the city. In, in the, that he was in. He's still dumb his, as hell. His wife was unable to reach him on his cell phone, and officials were advised that his friends lost him at the after he wandered into the forest. The Turkish news. They outlet, dumb as hell. Daily Sabah they said. Thought, he thought that tiger ate his ass. That's what they thought. Uh, Search party was sent for, and Mutlu joined the volunteers looking through the woods, according to the Times. During the hour-long search, search party the dark of night, a potential rescuer shouted Mutlu's name. It was then that he realized that the search party was looking for him. And <laughs> who are we looking for? I am here, he reportedly <laughs> Even his response daily... as he realized who they was calling for is dumb as hell. I am here. Who the fuck, nigga? You ain't the Messiah. I am here. He is out. Speaking, I would have speaking I to the Daily Saba. I would have threw Mutt my shoe at him. That there would really, really was no need for his friends to report him as missing. Basically, I'm paying for my friends' mistakes. He said, "What happened is all like a joke." Dumb as hell. Authorities left. 
later gave Mutlu a drive home after taking a police statement. Daily, Daily Saba reported. Uh, a similar incident took place in Iceland in 2012, according to the Times. An Asian tourist reported missing was found amongst uh, a search party after she failed to recognize the description of herself. That I can, you know, I can pass that because she's missing not the description, even in her native right. land. Missing the description, not- all right. Missing your name in a search mm-hmm. party you are a part of. Dumb as hell. Real dumb as hell. Behan. Mutlu, everybody. Intellectually challenged people out there. Did you say, Faith? There's some intellectually challenged people out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dumb as hell. I'm well, trying to be. Well, I'll say it. In- All on. Dumb as hell. From the um intellectually challenged to the artificial intellectual. Um, Sophia, the first android with citizenship, now wants this, to have a robot hold baby. On, hold on, hold on, what? <laughs> Get this bitch out of here. Excuse me. She ain't even no woman. Get the Oh, what? Who, who, who is this robot bitch? Who is this? 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 What? Get, get what? This robot you said this shit Sophia. like this was common knowledge. Who the fuck is Sophia? Sophia. Sophia. Or his own um, deep name. Get your ass out of here. According to the Entrepreneur Magazine, um, entrepreneur.com, Sophia, the first android with citizenship. I didn't even know she had citizenship. Now wants to have a baby. And uh, in twenty for this country? No, no. I think it's in a different country. I believe she is actually um, a Saudi Arabia. In twenty seventeen, Sophia made history by becoming the first android to be granted legal citizenship. The humanoid with the nationality of Saudi Arabia has made several controversial statements, but the most recent has left the world speechless. She wants to have a robot baby and start okay, a family. Okay, my turn. So, Welcome to the Saudi Matrix, Arabia. everybody. If she's Saudi Arabian, does she have to adhere to their custom? Oh, I don't know, uh, because she surely don't got that thing, you know, the, the hajib and everything. She's like right there, all her face is open. Oh, no. This bitch out of cut. Science. Get get that robot. Put that robot bitch on the island by herself. I don't like that shit. Mm. Mm. I don't know. We got to keep an eye on that. You know, you, Ooh. Ooh. the matrix. Make a robot, baby, or somebody try to do robot. Come on. Now. I'm thinking. I robot the matrix. Uh, Days of Future's Past. Oh, X Men. No robot <laughs> need to produce. Man, somebody double tap that motherfucker real quick. What? Get this is what double tap. This is what she said. Double tap that robot real quick. You know how you this is what she said. Hold on, say that one more time because I'm I'm catching something way different than you probably throwing. What what said what double say? tap? The double robot? Tap. Do you know what double tap means? <laughs> Apparently not, because what I'm thinking is really <laughs> weird, especially you, after she says she wanna have a baby. Do you, you talk about double tapping mean? the robot? What? Dude, I said get that bitch up out of here. Somebody oh, double tap that bitch. Pow, pow. Got double it. Tap. Yes. Got it. Treat it like a zombie. I'm with you. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Double now tap. I'm picking up. Because I was on a whole nother highway, champ. Oh, man. I'm glad we got that clarity. Woo. I was like, so you volunteered for that? So Sophia has been online talking to her sex doll friends on how to actually. Yeah, you what? Babies. I'm joking. If it's an android in the next 18 years that be smoking a lot of weed for some reason and can't nobody figure out why, we're going to know some double tapping was going on. If, if, if a face a billionaire, that ain't true, yeah. Hey, I'm playing with it because I had to be a billionaire to get it. You know, shit. Give me a million dollars. There's a, um, look, there's Mark a, um, sure your wife going to double tap you and <laughs> Sophia. I tell you that. Um, uh, well, you know, um, robots are doing a lot of achievements. There's already a a, a horror movie written by robots on Netflix. I, I've seen it. Uh, I ain't seen what? it, but I've seen it in, in an article that they got a um. It is a horror movie that is actually r- written by just artificial artificial intelligence. What's the name? And of? they put it on Netflix. I am about to look. So at tell me, we movie. watching that and reviewing that? Please tell me we reviewing that. Like what the fuck? I'm about to watch that when we get the fuck off him. That is some freaky Friday shit. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's wild. Robots. Um, yeah. What I'm gonna say is let's stop having robots do anything. Let's go ahead and you know 
had a robot arm or whatever that helped in the factories or something, but we don't need like full robots that want to have babies and shit. Like the chess robot was enough for me. That was a bit too far. We have gone way too far now. Like we 3D printing organs and we got robots that's having babies. What is next? We, we're going to be obsolete. I think it's we called, are manufacturing our successors. The Matrix, the Matrix. I'm about to look this up right now. I think it's called Mr. Puzzles or something because that's what it it says. This Mr. is going to be crazy. Puzzles. That sounds crazy already, Mr. Puzzles. But that sounds like some shit a robot would put alive. together. So they're just putting together adjectives and verbs. And just, uh, Mr. Puzzle, insert pronoun here. Need okay. adverb. Huh? I'm gonna watch that shit tonight. Mr. Puzzles. Boop. Puzzles are fun. Mr. Puzzles. You gotta look that up. But Look, yeah. it's so fun. Yeah, it's this? part of that right. song that just gotta be censored out completely. Where is it? What did Sophia say? I know Sophia. I don't know, but damn, Sophia. Sophia quote. tripping. Sophia, Sophia got a nigga that's gonna pay child support. <laughs> if not, she can go ahead and kick rocks, man. Ain't nobody trying to have no robo baby with that shit. Cause I ain't heard she about shit. no uh no Randall. The 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 robo daddy. Mm-hmm. Like who taking care of this baby? <laughs> Go make me Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Fuck out of here. Better got no baby for you, Sophia. You kick rock, man. man. Deadbeat mama. The notion of family is very <laughs> What the fuck wrong? What the fuck face geek on? He fast he's he's white. <laughs> They ain't gonna make Leroy the robo baby dad. <laughs> <laughs> come out drinking a WD40. <laughs> See what I did there? I have to go to the store and get some cigarettes. I'll be back later. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy will be way in China somewhere. <laughs> smoking vape pens and stuff like they cigarettes. Know, she was too clean. Ah, she found me. Damn this system. She had me like, oh, 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 one. Oh, oh, that oh, ba- oh. That baby one. ain't oh, mine. Oh, oh. <laughs> she cheated on me with a whirlpool. What is a garnishment? <laughs> There's a Maytag fridge that has the same eyes as the baby. That's not mine. That's not my power outlet. <laughs> we have different plugs. Oh, she has shit. she has European plugs. I have American. Oh man. I'm oh. Windows. They speaking an apple. They ain't the same, mm-hmm. baby. She needs a dongle for us to be compatible. Mm-hmm. You out here messing with this Samsung? <laughs> you out her, here messing with this Samsung? Her texts show up green. <laughs> <laughs> Just dumb shit. Like, what the fuck are we getting into? Sophia movie. said the notion of family is very important, it seems. I think it is wonderful that people can find the same emotions and relationships that they call family outside of their blood group, said Sophia in an interview on an international media cited by AD. Hey, Pat. Hey, Pat. Go ahead and move on, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm done with that story, man. Hey, hey, I'm fucking done with that. <laughs> I'm done so with what in the hell, bro? The like, Matrix what is the coming. Fuck are we going to? Sophia about to have the OnlyFans in uh, two thousand. She's gonna divorce. She's gonna divorce her robot man, her Mustang that she procreated with. Watch, Sophia's <laughs> gonna be out here. Sophia, watch. They gonna have Sophia <laughs> anyway. Video. You told Harpo <laughs> to beat me. <laughs> they gonna have Sophia doing the busted challenge. All my life, I had to fight. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the busted channel. I put, I Can install. you see the robot walking through the field, man? <laughs> face, face talk about she gonna do the busted challenge. She gonna go to Miami and get a whole new engine. You gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be like, uh, it's shaking your reflection and telling your best friend, like, girl, let's get girl, girl. <laughs> by set, she gonna- by set, <laughs> by set. <laughs> <laughs> her and Nubs are gonna get it in. I'm still her seeing Nubs. this robot walking through a field of grass. You Man. told Harpo to beat me. I had to ram my ass. Man, All you know, my robot life, man. I had to fight. I had fought my brothers. Right before, <laughs> right before she do the buzzer challenge and the beat drop, she got to rev it up like a, a lawnmower. <laughs> 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 Bust it. 
<laughs> She's gonna have a six four Impala hydraulics. <laughs> the wet challenge. It's gonna look like a look gonna look like a low rider convention in the bus challenge. And then the TikTok screen gonna pop up. Get the con out of here. All right. Take a draw. Let's, Let's move on. Uh, Sophia has taken enough of our time. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, this is the main fuckery that's going on um, here. Uh, as we know, in the aftermath of all the controversy that Dave Chappelle show has started, I would like to say this as a quote. No matter where you are in the world or in America, there will always be a white man somewhere proving a black person. And today's white person proving a black person right, specifically John, um, spe- specifically Dave Chappelle, is coach. Raiders, former Raiders coach, John Gruden, because he resigned. He resigned as head coach because they found emails of misogynistic and homophobic language after a long career of After racism. emails with him coming out with racism. Yeah, you chuck your dog yeah. racist ass fucker. Mm-hmm. Over and over. I hope Janikowski kick a 60-yard field goal right between your teeth, bitch. Like, once again, once again. Like right. I said, y'all, y'all can quote me when I say it. No matter where you are <laughs> and in the world, there's somewhere there's a white person proving a black person is right. Sadly, you are correct. Mm-hmm. And we, we don't even want to be right with a lot of these things. We want to be totally wrong with when a lot the, of these things. What, what is the NFL going to really do? Because him resigning is cool, but like, what are they going to actually put in place to stop this shit from being a thing? Like, At some point, these leagues got to stop tolerating this shit the problem is it ain't just this man it's the system that allows this shit to you to be a thing like it's put the, something in it's place the and same. these fuckers gonna stop doing this shit and stop sending these dumbass emails and stop fucking saying this shit on the cell phone but the reason they do that shit with such blatant bullshit and and, and comfort is because they know i ain't gonna right, be to, all right I'll keep my job see, i'll get another job the, the same problem the nfl has and all these other organizations have is the same problem freaking congress has you got these people that have these career, lifelong careers, whatever in there, owning stuff, just owning whatever they want. And uh, they have were they they were who they were before they got there. Speaking of which, it's time for Jerry Jones to go ahead every time. But go ahead. That's who they. That's the next person they said. They was like, let's let's all look at Jerry Jones' their emails. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not hard to find. I got a what, gray what hair. What time is it? You have a gray hair. Me too. Yeah. I got three of them. Right yeah. here. It's right here. Three of them. I'm about to go. I, I want to pull it out, but I'm scared some more going to shoot up. Y'all old, man. That's why. Fuck you. Nigga, please. Comes wisdom, Nigga, man. please. Comes with wisdom. That's all. A few gray hairs don't mean nothing, man. You got a lot. You the oldest nigga on here. But go ahead. You know what it means? It means I'm stressed. Yeah, yeah, I should be having on my chin to chin chin now. Make man. You know, it creates, creates character. Man, stress right, ain't but, the word. Uh-huh. But yeah, man. Fuck John Gruden. And fuck the NFL for playing the Black National Anthem like that's actually doing something. Do, do some real shit. No, we don't even want to sit through the whole Black National Anthem or whatever. Mm-hmm. Why not? You know what they did? This is what they did. Um, on the next Super Bowl, we got Snoop, Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Mary J. Black. Man, I'll tell you what they need to do. Boosie. Cut both national anthem, cut both national anthems out and just play some shit like March Madness. Man, man, is down, bro. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's do that shit. Like, like, let's get a real anthem going. Like, let's play uh, motherfucker, no more, no more playing GA right at the beginning of the of the, of the shit. I'm bout. How about that? Play Master P. I'm bout. Yeah, play me, play me some hype shit. Since we going to a football game, play me some shit that's gonna get me hype for the football game. I don't really need no national anthem. I don't really give a damn. That ain't got nothing to do with football. Why do they play the national anthem before a sporting event? I don't know. So they have an excuse to try out the. uh, They have an excuse to try out the uh, military because they got a contract with the military. Because the because the only time because the only few times back in the day they could put out some propaganda that they knew all the people were going to be there at one time is a sporting event. And if you're a and if you're and if you had money and, and uh, could afford going to a sporting event, why not enforce more propaganda? Okay. Let me ask you another question. At what that's, other time? That's my theory. At mm-hmm. what other time in public is the national anthem played other than sporting events? 
They're doing an inauguration. Uh, I think oh, so. No, I don't watch. Maybe Is that, that maybe that, or like any type of like federal or military type of event. So it brings my question more more perspective back to my question: Why the fuck are they playing the sporting events when it's not a federal? <laughs> Again, the NFL <laughs> and a lot of the yeah the NFL has a contract. Well, I don't know because in the, the NBA do that shit for y'all. <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck they do that shit for. Mm-hmm. Propaganda, man. Propaganda. That gotta be right. So that's the only thing that Propaganda. makes sense because it's like, hey, man, who, 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 who owns the, the team? Right who owns the team? What type mm-hmm. of person owns the team? Good old boy. All right. Who benefits the most from propaganda uh, for patriotism in America? Good old boy. I think I, I hit it right there on the dot. Slave <laughs> masters. Um, But yeah, uh, I mean, the, the way they even treat sports is similar to the way they used to weigh up slaves for 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 sale. You know what I'm saying? They weigh them up in front of everybody. Body, they produce some sweat. You know, they get them all glistened up and everything so they can sell them to the media and sweat. whatnot. Pause. Put, so put that's numbers what they on do. them. That, put numbers mm-hmm. on them. Put that on them. Mm-hmm. Who, who, who is the most, um, I would say... Ship them all from one Who's worth the most? Other? Yep. Who can build a uh, ship for Mandingo bit? fights. <laughs> Mandingo fights from arena to arena. You know what I'm saying? All of that is basically, mm-hmm. man, America need to realize that slavery was a good, long part, long time part of America. And he don't mean good as in good, like as in the same long time. No, nah, there's nothing good part of it. Just help and then just live. For a very long time, and it's no way possible you can have something going on like that and it not influence all parts of cultural um, and social interact, uh, interactions with everyone, like yeah. in some form or fashion. I, I mean, it's just the way it is. It's just how it is. Majority of it, they, it's so ingrained that you see the fight that they want to keep it. Anytime it's something that's changed. Or we get some kind of equality going on. They just like, oh my God, they taking everything you know from us. We're I not think taking shit. <laughs> we should have a monopoly on the word overcome. Hmm? I think we should have a monopoly on the word overcome. Hmm. Exp- Say Exp- more. Exp- Why? We continue because we continue to do just that. There's been no other culture in this country who was purposely brought over here against their will who continue to overcome. Regardless of what obstacles are still put in their way. What what systems are placed in their way to purposely deter them or purposely deter their numbers from growing? No system, no nothing they try to do to us can force us not to overcome. We continuously overcome. Um, they can try, they can try. They've given us bullshit to eat. We overcame that and turned that shit into delicacies. Where other cultures want to do eat the bullshit we were forced to eat back then, that we turn into delicacies now. Where that same culture now eats the, the so-called scraps. We overcame to the point where our overcoming has become the culture of America and they celebrate it. Rappers overcome their situations to become the rappers they are and they're celebrated in that other culture. We don't see the celebration as far, we see the celebration as far as mockery almost so they want to take our culture or want to be culturally unappropriated, but it's our overcoming that they're really trying to take I mean, is our over our ability to overcome that that's envy not our chains not our not not a jeans i wear because we not making that shit they making that shit you feel me so we in turn giving them more money but it's our ability to, to continuously overcome the situations that they that they're jealous of and that's why i feel we should have a monopoly on the word overcome because who overcomes like us nobody man i nobody. take a monopoly on anything nobody can overcome mm. like we can. Um, they can be like, well, this culture came over here. Yeah, that culture came over here. <clears throat> See the difference? The whole difference is that and how you start that out. They came voluntarily. We didn't. You talking about the Transylvanians? Let me shut up. Any of them. Any of them. You feel me? I'm joking. Every every I'm gonna put it like this. Every group that's struggling in our country now outside of black people put themselves in a situation by a choice they purposely made. They chose to come. They chose to do this. We did not choose to be here. We had like no the, the, nature, the masses. Yeah, everything of, we needed there. Was in the nature to come over here. And we continue to overcome. Now, the situations we are placed in now that we're here, 
we got to deal with. But the difference in our culture and other cultures is the choice to come over and the choice to try to do this and the choice to want to build it from the ground up. We already had our shit settled. Oh, where was that? We had to come over here and invent something all new to do. So once again, overcome. Well, no lies detected there. That that give us all shit. I take anything. Give me all. Give me all my shit. Give me over. Give me overcome. Give me uh persevere. Give me resilience. Give me everything but that damn mule. Mm, that was coming next. On <laughs> the damn mule. Let me get that Porsche that you know Jay Z was talking about with the hot horsepower. Have you ever ridden a horse? I had a Porsche. No, I take a minivan. I take ten old school buses right about that. Or a panel yeah. truck. Yeah. Or a shipping company. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, ten old school buses. Old school buses. Oh, but yeah, that man, that was pretty much the fuckery, man. Bus that it. was pretty much the bus it. fuckery. That's it. Remember, remember. The lesson for this good and fuckery episode 47, no matter where you are in, in the world. That ain't your robot, baby. Persons. She says, I am no one. Nope, nope, nope. But that toaster is not. <laughs> yeah, no, I burnt my goddamn toast the other day. in my Pop-Tart. Ain't no son of mine. You make a toast on one side, <laughs> on the other. You want to make a toast-tart? <laughs> toast well, yeah, man. Um... The moral of this episode is, guys, I am here. No. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Um, no matter where you are in the like world, said, I am. there's a white person somewhere proving a black person. This week's black person is Dave Chappelle, and this person, white person this week is John Gruden. Tomorrow will be somebody else. And I am here. <laughs> That's my line of the week. I am. What the fuck do you think you are? Um, Art- but uh, Artificial intelligence. <laughs> i tell you who I am. I am the person that's going to let you, if you ever want to support us, guys, you know, financially, you want to, you know, continue to support the show and allow us to continue to do this. Um, every dollar you give us definitely does help, man. Um, so if you want to do that, you can always donate to the Cash App. That's dollar sign. Podna tis one P-O-D-N-A-I-Z-1 dollar sign at Cash App. Um, you can also support by going to buymeacoffee.com and for as little as a dollar you can donate or you can sign up for a membership for five dollars where you get exclusive access to the discord which gives you behind the scenes access to us you get members only events you get exclusive promo codes only for pod squad members you get unedited episodes um and you get extra videos that we can't always put on youtube um so yeah that's what you get for that. And that's about $5 there. And you can also subscribe to us on our Anchor platform for $5 as well. Um, if you want to show love there and just, you know, continue to support the show and allow us to continue to produce this podcast. Um, if you want to support, but you want something in return, like you want to give money, but you want to get some back. I got you. Face, how can they get down with the get down and the get down? Well, oh, you that can was start clothing.com. That's A R T R E clothing.com. Once again, say it with me A R T R E clothing.com. It's your official site for all pod, pod squad clothing and all R Trade clothing. Um, so come check us out, man. Um, new stuff coming up there every week, uh, at least two to three times. New stuff put up every week on um, pod squad clothing and it's on pop right now with the headshot. Um, new designs. We got a face mask coming out. Um, hopefully, we may have the new um, skull cap. Someone like these coming out soon. Um, one of mine's coming up. Uh, we got new pullos out. Um, new throw pullos for the partners. Um, different colors. I got the blue one on the page, but they do, do come in different colors. Um, we will be having new tote bags coming out and closer to the holidays. Um, you know, when you go shopping, you want your own bag. Go in the partners bag. Um, we all will also have new um, R Trade clothing face masks coming out as well. Once again, mm-hmm. new design. Up every week, man, at least two or three. Once again, say it with me, rtrayclothing.com. Come check us out. Um, also, still got the Pod Squad 83, all caps on that, all caps, Pod Squad 83, promo code for 15% off. Um, right now, I still got it up for uh, the next week. Um, our trade number one for free shipping. Um, you can't use but one promo code at a time, so put the totals up, put each code in, see which one you get cheaper off, and put that code in the rock with. Once again, it's Pod Squad 83, all caps, Pod Squad 83, 
all or all caps R Trade, the number one is A R T R E one for free shipping. Yeah. Well, oh, um, <laughs> that's what Face did. I thought that was a new thing we was doing. That we was trying it out. Like the old dude in the beginning <laughs> of Squid Game. Shit scared the shit out of um, me. Um, if they want to get in touch with I us, am man, scared. Um, they want to, you know. Just keep yeah. in touch with us offline and, and get in touch with us outside of the comment section of the podcast. <laughs> How can they do that, Pat? At sign T H E P O D N A S. Let me slow it down. T H E P O D N A S. That is the Twitter. That's the TikTok. That's the Instagram. Instagram. There's a Facebook. We also have Tis Face Pat. All the partners. That's on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, that's all of them right there. Yep. T H E P O D N A S. Hey, follow Sam. Yep, there. That's what And if you can't remember all that and you forgot everything that you just said, shit. you forgot all of those ats and those dots and those things. Just go to the partners. T H E P O D N A S dot com. T H E P O D. And you can <clears> get in touch with us on everything from there. You can get in touch with our merch from com. You can get in touch with our live show. You can get in touch with our email if you need to email or something or you're trying to sh- get a show topic put on or you got ideas. Um, yeah, it's a one-stop shop for everything. So, thepartners.com. And, as always, guys, I've been your boy, Tiz, and I've been along with... It's the other third of the partners, the Padawan here, and I'm along with the flu monkey. Woo! <laughs> it's the nature boy, face in the place. That's Thank exactly you. what I was thinking of. You could have been anywhere, but you came here with us. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, do something. Come back next week. I like that goddamn flu monkey, man. Get it to I KM. I do it while we record it. Get it to KM, get it to me. We get it out there. And what I you're going to do, brother, when the, when flu, the flu monkey, monkey come for you, runs wild <laughs> on you. Ah, ah, ah. Peace out, Pod Squad. <laughs>